What is going on guys? Welcome back to my channel, and today we are doing something very different from what I've been known to do up until this point. Every narration piece I've done before has been a quick commentary, meaning I give my thoughts and a brief analysis on a film, game, novel, or show, preferably within a span of 8 minutes. This video, however, is going to be very different. This will most likely be my longest video to date, and by far the hardest for me to edit. And while those thoughts crossed my mind and I recognized it would be difficult, that didn't over power how much I wanted to make this video upon re-watching Todd Phillips' Joker, starring Joaquin Phoenix as the title character. I don't like to keep people waiting and I honestly hate it when they keep me waiting, so I'm going to give a couple of warnings and then get right into the video. First warning, this video contains every existing spoiler for Joker, so be sure to watch the film and then return. Second warning, Joker is an extremely mature film which deals with subjects that may be disturbing to some viewers. With all of that in mind and said, let's delve into my critique of Joker. I'm going to start this critique off with the major technical aspects of the film, cinematography, production design, costume design, and visual effects. As for cinematography, this film is breathtaking. Every shot feels rich despite the gritty portrayal of Gotham throughout the film. Each scene seems to have a select tone of cinematography to match the situation. The opening shot with Arthur in his workplace applying the makeup is one of my favorites in the film. It perfectly illustrates his world in one singular frame. He's excluded from those around him and in his own personal world, trying to figure out if his life is a tragedy or a comedy, as he quite literally forces a smile onto his face. Not only do the visuals perfectly portray Arthur's internal struggles, they also capture the world around him wonderfully, with many shots presenting us with a dark and sorrowful color palette when conveying Gotham City. This is easily the most realistic portrayal of this city in any big screen adaptation. The camera often shoots in wides to show us the piles of trash lining the streets and sidewalks accompanied by both beautiful and grim lighting. Even indoors, the film consistently feels raw, in particular when Arthur is in the hospital with his mother. There is subtle blue and orange lighting on the sides of his face that bring out the shadows perfectly. It's also symbolism for his internal struggle, blue to orange, tragedy to happiness. Take the first fantasy sequence in the film, as we go from Arthur watching Murray on television to his personal fantasy with him in the audience. The shots are vibrant and exciting, which matches Arthur's feelings in that moment. This is one one of the many ways the film puts us in Arthur's shoes and helps us to understand him. When the entire film we're watching visually represents what this man is feeling, we as audience members are going to feel it as well. Or how about the first time we see Arthur get beat up? The sign he holds also represents the film's overall theme, everything must go. In order for Arthur to reach his lowest of lows and descend fully into madness, everything must be taken from him. The shot where he lies on the alley floor after the beat-up sends chills down my spine. Arthur is defeated in this moment, and the film's theme lies shattered in front of him as he briefly reaches for it, thinking that maybe there's a possibility he can fix this. I'll discuss more of the thematic and symbolic meanings of the film's visuals during the analyzation portion of the video. The production design, in my opinion, is perfect. Once again, the film puts you in Arthur's shoes and shows you the world from his perspective. A dirty, trashy, thrown away place. The set designers really gave it their all here, and it shows. As mentioned before, the sidewalks are lined with piles of garbage, which was actually a real-life event in the early 80s, which is when the film takes place. The real-life garbage strike was a horrible time for many of the US's major cities. While Gotham is a fictional city, it makes it feel all the more real when the real-life events are incorporated into it. Gotham constantly feels like a real place and a fully realized city. It doesn't feel like New York, Los Angeles, or Chicago feels like its own place. There's a video on YouTube right now by Vanity Fair where Todd Phillips, the director, breaks down in great detail the making of the opening scene. Here's a clip from that. I like the scope of this shot. Um, again, this is all live done by Mark Friedberg, except weirdly because I'm obsessive. I didn't like the blank space. So this building's back here. That's all put in because I wanted it to feel really oppressive and Gotham is always over Arthur, and we just didn't love any kind of blank spaces in the skyline, so to speak. His statements really say it all for me, but there are many sets that are extremely vibrant and colorful. The Murray Franklin show, for instance. The stage is nothing but bright and extravagant colors. Even Arthur's attire is bright and colorful. Clowns weren't originally viewed as something to fear, but rather something to enjoy, as they wear appealing colors and makeup. 
and then Stephen King just had to go and write it. For costume design, Todd Phillips said they were very inspired by the attire of Charlie Chaplin. Arthur's outfit in the opening scene is actually a direct replication of one of Chaplin's outfits, minus the clown makeup, of course. Arthur has a certain music to him that I can't help but love. It's the reason many well-known 60s and 70s tunes are used in the film, including That's Life by Frank Sinatra and Rock and Roll Part 2 by Gary Glitter, who was a man that I'm pretty sure we all just don't want to discuss. The makeup for Arthur when he eventually becomes the Joker is actually my second favorite design aside from Ledger's. Ledger's design was meant to encapsulate the gritty realness of the Dark Knight, and it worked perfectly. Arthur's makeup and costume is meant to capture what is within him, a clown. Now, Arthur isn't the only person in the film with brilliant costume design. Murray Franklin's outfits, while somewhat generic, feel like something a talk show host would wear. It never feels fake. I completely bought Robert De Niro as Murray Franklin, despite the obvious comparisons to Rupert Pumpkin in The King of Comedy. I haven't seen that film, so therefore I can't criticize this film in the regard when it comes to my personal opinion. In the clip I showed before, Todd Phillips stated that he wanted Gotham to constantly feel over Arthur, like it was beating him down, both literally and figuratively. There is some CG world building here that I honestly didn't even notice upon first viewing. If any sky is revealed, it's always dark or overcast. While I can't really discuss the visual effects for very long as there are hardly any within the film, what I can say is that the world building through CGI is extremely impressive from both a technical and thematic standpoint. All in all, I adore this film. I think the story is brilliantly told. Joaquin Phoenix gives a performance which is honestly competing with Ledger's as my favorite for the Joker. Visually, the film is breathtaking, and as a character study of someone slowly descending into madness, I personally can't pinpoint a major flaw. This film has obviously been criticized for the amount it borrows from Scorsese films such as King of Comedy or Taxi Driver. I, on the other hand, can't speak from a first-hand experience for either of those films, and therefore I can't fault Joker for that. So overall, Joker is a masterfully crafted tragedy with much more to offer than I ever expected. Many scenes are hard to watch, but that's the point anyway. I found myself loving it for the entire runtime and I'm giving it a solid 10 out of 10. Now we're going to get into the analytical portion of the video, where I discuss the story and themes of the film as a whole. This is not going to be in chronological order of the way the film plays out, but more of an analysis using different portions of the film to make my points. Also, just as a reminder, this portion of the video is 100% spoiler filled. First up, the character of Arthur Fleck. One of the best things about the Joker is the fact that we've never known anything about his past aside from the Killing Joke comics and film. Fans love the idea of Joker being a constant, which is why many were skeptical about this film being an origin story for the beloved clown Prince of Crime. The film, however, isn't giving birth to some of the most well-known comic book Jokers. This isn't the origin story of the over-the-top criminal mastermind of the original comics. This is a realistic and probable portrayal of how an ordinary man would get to the breaking point and choose a life of crime over his own. This film is a tragedy. We have to sit there and watch as a man who we do care for and sympathize with falls victim to the disregard of society and it's honestly heartbreaking. At the end of the film, when he is rescued from the wreckage of the car accident and stands on top of the damage, dancing and embracing the hundreds of people he's inspired, it almost brought a tear to my eye the first time I watched it, not to mention Hildur Gudenitor's chilling score, which perfectly captures this moment. Throughout the film, we've watched various things happen to Arthur, some big and some small. I break it down into an order. 1. Arthur gets pummeled in the alleyway. 2. He has a negative encounter with the woman on the train which also introduces the knowledge that Arthur, aside from his mental illness, suffers from a real-life condition which causes frequent and uncontrollable laughter that doesn't match how he feels. 3. Arthur fantasizes about being on The Murray Show and then comes to the realization that it was all in his head and he can't actually experience it. 4. Arthur is forced to pay from his paycheck the cost of the sign as his boss doesn't believe that he was jumped. 5. Arthur is told by his mother that there is no way he can be successful as a comedian. 6. Arthur accidentally fires the gun given to him by Randall. 7. Arthur is caught with a gun in the children's hospital and is fired. 8. He is beat up by the three guys on the subway and kills them with that same gun. 9. Arthur hunts down the last man and kills him in cold blood, not self-defense. 10. 
After his first murder, Arthur dances in an abandoned restroom, showing that he is not disturbed in the least by what he did. Turning point 1. 11. Thomas Wayne first refers to Arthur and many of Gotham's less fortunate residents as clowns. 12. The funding for Arthur's therapy is cut and he can no longer get the treatment required for his mental state. 13. Arthur gets his chance to do stand-up comedy, but his laughing condition takes over, and he is humiliated on stage. 14. Arthur finds a letter written by his mother for Thomas Wayne, which says that he is actually Thomas Wayne's son, and she has been lying to him his whole life. 15. Arthur is confronted by Alfred, who tells him that his mother was a sick and delusional woman. 16. Arthur's mother suffers from a stroke and is taken to the hospital. 17. The detectives call in to question Arthur's motives, as they are suspicious that he might have been responsible for the subway murders. 18. The detectives call in to question his laughing condition, making fun of him. 19. Arthur sits beside his mother in the hospital, forced to watch her suffer. 20. He is publicly humiliated by his comedy idol on national television. Turning point. Two. I could go to 30 and get to the end of the film, but I think you get the point. The film is set up in such a way that one series of bad things occur, leading to one major event which truly changes Arthur as a person. Arthur is slowly, even if he doesn't realize it, filling up with more and more hate and anger, eventually losing everything he has to live for. He no longer has a job, he discovers that his mother stood by when he was a child and allowed one of her boyfriends to repeatedly abuse him, causing severe trauma to his head. Arthur finds that he is actually adopted, which is yet another lie upon the notion that Penny never actually had an affair with Thomas Wayne. Realizing that his mother has done nothing but lie to him and allow his suffering for his whole life, he kills her. Turning point three. Now, Arthur has nothing, and in a way, he's free. The entire last act of the film is Arthur as the Joker. We've sat through two acts of him becoming the Joker, and now he actually is him. In a way, Arthur Fleck was killed alongside his mother. This last act is honestly a blast. After having to suffer with Arthur for an hour and 22 minutes, we now get to see him as the Joker for the final 35. He dyes his hair, paints on the makeup, and dons the suit. We also get some extremely dark comedy after Joker kills Randall. He promises Gary that he's not going to hurt him and then comedically jumps out at him as he walks by. It gets even darker when you realize that the door is locked and Gary isn't tall enough to reach it. Did Joker tell him he could leave just to kill him when he couldn't reach the lock? At first you don't really know, which brings a great sense of unpredictability. Now, earlier when Arthur killed his mom, he said to her that he used to think that his life was a tragedy, but now he realizes that it's a comedy. It's pretty brilliant that the film, up until this point, has been nothing but a tragedy, and when he kills his mom, it becomes a comedy. This is fantastic storytelling, as the film is entirely from Arthur's perspective, when we feel the film change from a tragedy to a comedy, that's also what Arthur is feeling. It's honestly genius. Then we get the Murray Franklin show scene, which is destined to become one of the most iconic Joker sequences of all time. Joker is now fully embracing his inner persona. He whimsically dances out onto the stage, smiling and laughing with the audience. Now, earlier in the film when Arthur rehearsed for the show, he planned to kill himself with the revolver in front of the audience, but his hate that he has developed for Murray overtakes him, and he decides that this guy is going to go down with him. They have a brilliantly written conversation discussing Joker's view on society. We get a great line that's honestly one of the most powerful in the film. Oh, why is everybody so upset about these guys? If it was me dying on the sidewalk, you'd walk right over me. I pass you every day and you don't notice me. This is so powerful because it's so painfully true. The fact that the film gives you no choice but to question your own ideology and morals, but also to think about how we contribute to creating the Joker, is really risky on the part of the filmmakers, and I really commend them for doing it. These are issues that need to be discussed. We then get what is probably my favorite line in the film. There is language that I have to cut out, so if there is a weird cut, that's why. And don't worry, I'm going to cut away from the blood. How about another joke, Murray? No, I think we've had enough of your jokes. What do you get? I don't think so. When you cross I think a mentally ill loner with a it. society that abandons him and treats him like trash! Call the police, I'll man. tell you what you get! Call the police! Get what you deserve! <laughs> At this point, Joker is completely unhinged, and the scene that follows is, dare I say, beautiful. I know. 
Isn't it beautiful? It's what I discussed at the beginning of the analysis portion. Joker is rescued from the wreckage by people he's inspired and dances on top of it, the score completely overtaking the scene. And now we get my favorite moment in the entire film. Joker takes his own blood and dons his signature clown smile, accompanied by the, once again, amazing score. You might think the film is over at this point, but no. We have another scene that continues the dark comedy that moves the entire third act. Joker is being held in Arkham, and we see him laughing, but we can tell it's not his condition. He is actually experiencing true amusement here. We see that he is thinking about Bruce Wayne standing over his dead parents in the alleyway. The woman across the table asks if he'll tell her, and he simply says that she wouldn't get it. Normally, people would feel the need to justify the joke to ensure that others around them understand it, but at this point, he legitimately just doesn't care. The final shot is my favorite in the film. We see Joker making his way down the hallway, leaving bloody footprints behind him, not only implying that he killed the woman, but it's also genius symbolism. We get another moment of the film's dark comedy as Joker is chased by guards down one way of the hallway, and then it is reversed, and we see Joker chasing them in the opposite direction. And that's our movie. Joker is honestly my favorite film of 2019. It is masterfully crafted and expertly told and paced. Though the final act is essentially a dark comedy, there is a deep underlying tone which is the reminder of the true tragedy that this film is, which is perfectly captured in the score when Joker dons the blood smile. Arthur Fleck, a genuinely nice and kind-hearted man, has become a reckless, remorseless, mass-murdering psychopath. That is sad. In fact, as I said before, it's heartbreaking. Joker is the ultimate tragedy. Thanks so much for watching guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and definitely leave some suggestions in the comments of other films you would like me to cover in this format. Once again, thanks for watching, it really does mean a lot. I'll see you in the next video, and until then, thanks for watching, good night, and always remember, that's life.